Hello! Welcome to another episode of What Do I Do? How Do I Use This Wave Pool Thing That I Got? Um, and in this episode, we're going to talk about X, Y, Z, and rotational controls. So, I'm picking up exactly from where I left off in the last one. I've got Luma Key set to white mode, and I'm at about 50%. I've got mix set to all the way down to negative, negative one or whatever. Hue is cranked up a little bit. Saturation and brightness are more or less passed through. Let me crank up the saturation a little bit more. There we go. And the temporal filter is at about like one o'clock or so. Turn up the temporal filter resonance a bit too. So, and then let's see what happens as I move X around. You can see a lot more kind of uh, patterns forming in the, the, the background here. The patterns on my face will change as well. The patterns that are keyed in. And then as I go from one way to another, I change the directional movement of everything. Let me turn up brightness a bit and see what happens there. Hmm, not a lot. Okay. And then let me start playing around with Y as well. see changing Y and X together does a lot of interesting stuff. Oh, this is a pretty fun mode for like going black and white too, so if I turn off saturation all the way, you get some pretty interesting uh, effects happening. slow down the period too, so there, we slow down the delay some, so you can kind of see how the X and Y movement makes these shapes form more strongly. Turn up saturation a bit, get some more color back in here. Dial down hue a little bit, see if we stabilize things. Turn up the temporal filter some. All right. And you notice there are buttons next to the X and Y sliders if you're using the Nano Control 2 version of that. Uh, what each of these buttons do for pretty much all these controls on the bottom here, um, the buttons change the total range of everything. So you can see as I go back and forth X and Y, it's not really a huge range at the moment. Uh, but if I hit S and light that up, you can see it displaces things even farther and makes for coarser shapes happening. Let me turn off the hue for a moment. And as I go up to M, it's even farther over. So this is when it kind of stops being like so much feedback and starts being a lot more just like uh, traditional frame buffer kind of stuff. Let me just key everything in too so you can see what happens. So as it reaches the end of the screen, it just dies off. Um, there's also a button which turns on Toroidal Universe. Let me turn that on and we key everything off. Oh, not working quite right. Oh yeah, let me do this. And then here we go. You see, with Toroidal Universe turned on, it's all the, the feedback is wrapping around, so it kind of lives forever. And it does this in the Y direction as well. Let me turn Y all the way up. And we can see the feedback shapes are wrapping around. Everything as it goes to the top, it pops out at the bottom. So with both X and Y turned up to their maximum amount, you can get these really sort of coarse shapes happening. And let me try playing around with Z a little bit. You can get this sort of wobbly motion going on. Um, there's an interesting thing that happens with Z, too, when Toroidal Universe is turned on. I'm going to crank Z all the way up to max, zoom out all the way, and you can see it goes into this fractal style mode. I'm zooming in on the Z, zoom back out a bit, I'm going to turn down strobing a little bit by adding the temporal filter in a little bit. Okay. 
And then let's compare this to how it looks when we turn off Toroidal Universe. So then when I turn off Toroidal Universe, things don't wrap around. So then you get this very sort of more traditional style of like what happens when you point a camera at the screen. And here I'm just kind of messing around with XYZ all at the same time. Getting some really swoopy stuff happening. If I want it to be a bit more jittery and harsh, I can turn the temporal filter down. And then it'll like strobe out a bit if you're interested in more strobing happening. As someone who works on developing things a lot, I try to be aware of how much strobing I'm exposing myself to, so I try to dial it down <laughs> more often than not. Alright, and then one more directional control that we have is rotate. So, zoom! There's rotation. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, I turned on the brightness invert button. And I'm not mixing at all, I'm just keying everything in. So this is, there are switches for brightness invert, saturation invert, and hue invert. And I'll go over more of them, more of how they, they operate in a future video, but just know that they exist. And you can do slightly different things with hue, saturation, brightness, invert that you can do with invert mixing, either with the, the frame buffer delay or with the temporal filter. Yeah, so that's sort of the basics of XYZ and Theta. Theta is what I call rotations. You can see as I rotate Theta all the way to the maximum, you can do really interesting stuff. Oh yeah, let me turn on Toroidal Universe with Rotate 2 and you can see how fractal it gets. You can get some kind of MC escher sorts of tessellations happening. Now I'm just playing with XYZ and Theta all at the same time and just adjusting them all. Yeah, this is kind of where it really starts to become a powerful video synthesizer in its own right. Because there's not really anything else out there that I'm aware of that lets you do like radial symmetry kind of synthesis. Or at least not for the price of this thing. <laughs> I think you could do it pretty with a pretty complicated video, um, modular video, analog modular video setup. Or you can do it with software too. Yeah, so that's it for the basics of XYZ Theta and Toroidal Universe. And join me next time, and I'll talk about the Hue Chaos buttons. Alright, uh, thanks a bunch. Have fun!